Hello again, I'm back doing uh, trigonometric graphs and what I talked about in detail was the sine of theta. And that's actually the one that I talked the most about. I'm not going to talk about the rest of them in, in as much detail because you just do the same basic thing. But what I want to talk about is its relation to the cosecant of theta. Basically the cosecant of theta can also be written as 1 over the sine of theta. So what it is, is it's its reciprocal function. It's not its inverse, it's its reciprocal. Now I went ahead and I you know, row y equals the sine of theta, and I made myself a table, very similar to what I did in the previous lessons. And then I went ahead and made myself a makeshift graph. Let me go ahead and point this out again. I think I've pointed it out every single time, but I'll go ahead and say it again. The graph keeps going uh, this way, and the graph keeps going this way. It's a, you know, periodic, wavy type graph. You know, it goes up and down, up and down. And depending on what I decide to do, if I try to affect its amplitude, its phase shift, vertical shift, uh, its period, it's going to change a little bit. Well, how does this work in relation to the cosecant of theta? Well, I'm glad you asked. I look at this table right here, and it helps me ascertain what the, how the parent function of a cosecant of theta looks like. Now, you can always affect its amplitude, and you can affect uh, its period, you can affect its phase shift, and you can affect its vertical shift as well. I mean, it's basically the same exact thing as you know, affecting any sort of trig graph. They're very closely related, to say the least. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and give you the basic premise of a cosecant of theta. So I'm looking at this one, and I want to see how this works. Well, one thing you have to realize is that uh, in order to figure out you know, the y values, especially at the points of zero, you have to think about it in a little bit different of a sense. It's actually zero over one because one is the assumed radius of the unit circle. So that's what I'm doing when I'm figuring out the y values for the sine of theta. So every time I see a zero, I'm going to put zero over one. That's very important uh, because when I look at this one, if I want to take its reciprocal, if I want to take the reciprocal of the y value, because that's going to be the cosecant, I'm going to flip all of these. This one's going to be 1 over 0. Well, 1 over 0 is undefined. So I'm not going to write 1 over 0, I'm going to write undefined. And this one's going to be 2 over root 2, and when I flip that, I'll go ahead and put it here. And I try to rationalize the denominator, what I get is... Well, let's see, I multiply by root 2, multiply by root 2, this is 2 root 2 over 2, because root 2 times root 2 is root 4, root 4 is 2, bam, that's root 2. So this one switches to root 2, when I take its reciprocal, oops, I threw the 1. When I flip 1, it's still just 1. When I flip root 2 over 2, it's root 2. And by the way, root 2 in your calculator comes out to about 1.414. 0 over 1, well, when I flip it, it's 1 over 0. That's undefined. This is negative root 2 or negative 1.414. This is negative 1. This is uh, negative root 2 or negative uh, 1.414. This is 1 over 0. When I flip it, it's undefined. Well. What does that have to do with anything? Well, we're about to find out. So at zero, for the cosecant graph, it's undefined. So here, it's undefined. No, oh, that doesn't really help me out. Oh, just, just wait. And uh, pi over 4, it's root 2, so it's 1.414. And this is going to be the cosecant graph that I graph right now. So 1.414 is like right here. Yeah, close as I can get it. At pi over 2, it's 1. Here, it's 1.414. Uh, the next one's undefined. Well, that's a surprise. It's actually not a surprise. So here, it's undefined. And here, it's undefined. I'm going to need those vertical asymptotes. It, it helps me figure out what the graph looks like. The next one's at uh, negative root 2, which is negative 1.414. So that's about right there. Okay, without even guessing, the next one's at negative 1. Ah, I, I know that. Oh, I'll show you how I knew that. Next one's at uh, negative 1.414. The next one's undefined. I didn't do the table values for any of the other ones, but I can already tell you what it looks like. The next one will be uh, 1.414. This is right here, this. And it'll be undefined on the very next one. Well, let's just make it consistent. It'll look like that. So this is what your graph looks like. Pretty bizarre. Well, if I go ahead and I graph it, and we'll see how it goes. I should probably use a different color entirely. See what the cosecant of theta looks like. 
looks like this, but it never touches here and here because those are vertical asymptotes. Well, what happens is the graph keeps going and going, never touching those points. And that's all there is right there. Then, graph looks like this, going down, never touching or crossing through those vertical asymptotes. Then the graph does this again. And then the next loop will be down in the uh, lower quadrant, or in the lower y values, or negative y values, pardon me. So this graph is actually pretty cool. When I figured this out, this is a trick I just used to figure out the cosecant of theta, because I didn't want to sit there and plug in values. I just, oh, that makes sense. All it is, is just the loops. Like, every time there was a high point or a low point, that's where I just started my graph. That's the high point, so I'm going to start it up there. That's the low point, so I'm going to start it there. That's the high point, so I'm going to start there. Next time I see a low point, I'm going to start it down there. No real thought process into it once you figure that out. It's not too bad. But it's pretty cool. As you can see, uh, if I kept going, it would go down, up, down, up, down, up. Uh, same thing here. If I went uh, towards the negative x values, it would start down, up, down, up, down, up. That's all a cosecant graph really does. It's just looped on the, uh, well, I don't know if loop is the proper word, but it's like some kind of fusion or something on the maximum and the minimum of the particular sign value. With that said, there's a few things to consider here. Uh, the domain is not as easy as one would think to figure out. The domain is from negative infinity to infinity. Nah, not quite. I can plug in any x value I want, for the most part, except, except for intervals of pi. And what I mean by that is uh, uh, it's not equal to pi times uh, any integer. Uh, what I mean by that is integer 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So pi times n, where n stands for any integer, is where the domain can't be equal to. Here's an example. Pi times 0 is 0. Well, it can't be there. Pi times 1 is pi. It's, there's no uh, defined value at pi. Uh, pi times 2 is 2 pi. It's not defined at 2 pi. It's not defined at 3 pi. It's not defined at 4 pi, 5 pi, negative 1 pi, negative 2 pi, etc. The range for this graph is from negative infinity to 1, or excuse me, negative 1. Then it's uh, in union, I put, suppose is what you put, um, with um, 1 to infinity. It doesn't include any of the values uh, between negative 1 and 1. It does include negative 1 and 1, but it doesn't include any of the values in between those because you can't graph your cosecant there. Yeah, I know if you play around with your amplitude and your phase shift and your vertical shift and your period, well, period's not going to really affect you know, your range, but all those other aspects uh, do affect your domain and range, then that's a different story. But this is just in terms of the parent function. What I used to do when I saw a cosecant graph is I just put the loops right on top. I made myself a sine graph and just put these little parabola sort of shapes on top. And that's it, no real thought process there. But it takes a little bit of time. So that's where the cosecant graph comes from. All you do, if you want to figure out its parent function, is just flip all the y values. That's what you get. And you can make yourself a graph to see how it looks. Well, I hope that was helpful. Have a good day for now. Goodbye.